Thank you very much. And thank you for this opportunity to be here in Lviv. I remember our last meetings in February uh, at the last meeting of the Senate and the dense ambience around uh, these meetings just uh, three weeks uh, before the outbreak of the war. And uh, we were expecting the war, but you could never expect such worse consequences of the war as Ukraine with this isn't. I'm happy to be here, but it's a sad end for everything that happened since our last, last meeting. And thank you for this opportunity uh, to discuss this uh, uh, politic of the Holy See. Uh, and I will try to uh, abstract a bit from the current references to the Ukrainian war, to uh, try to see uh, what I would qualify under the famous uh, quote from uh, French historian Fernand Brodel, Les structures de longue durée. Uh, what to are the structures that are shaping minds for a longer period? And uh, in uh, telling it, I will start with quoting uh, Stamara Gelidze quoted her exchanges with Cardinal Parolin in, uh, uh, at the moment of uh, presenting her credence. And I will quote Pope Francis from my farewell reception exactly two years ago in June 2020. Uh, the Pope was quite favorite to the construction of the European Union but he framed it in a very specific way. We shall invest in the European integration because otherwise an empire endangers Europe, an Ottoman empire. I reacted to these words by saying that we know also another empire, the Russian empire that endangers Europe, not only the Ottoman empire. But the Pope, once again, but with real emphasis on this word said, I tell you Ottoman Empire, I know what I'm talking about. This was the end of our exchange, the last exchange with Pope Francis. And these words are with me uh, uh, ever since. Uh, and uh, I, uh, see uh, these words also as one of the keys to understand uh, what happens uh, uh, with reaction to uh, the Russia or all this relation with the Russian Orthodox Church, but also other uh, uh, main directions of the foreign policy of the Holy See under the Pope Francis. I would say there are three main lines uh, uh, in this dialogue uh, that uh, uh, the Holy See maintains uh, since uh, uh, arrival of Francis 10 years ago. First is a dialogue with liberal Muslim world. This dialogue with uh, 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 Imam Al-Tayyip uh, uh, from uh, uh, the Mosque uh, Al Azhar in Cairo is one of the dominant uh, line of this pontificate. And the Pope is able also to uh, resign on certain uh, uh, specific references of uh, the religion, of the Christian religion tradition, uh, in engaging uh, with. Um, uh, the liberal Muslims, uh, the declaration from Abu Dhabi 2019 contains references that some uh, uh, clerks in uh, the Holy See consider being far from uh, uh, the Christian teaching about the equality of religions, uh, variety of religions willing by God, uh, that it is not coherent with uh, uh, the Christian teaching. teaching. This uh, declaration from Abu Dhabi was then, uh, or the, con uh, the content of this uh, declaration was uh, 
developed further in this encyclical letter Fratelli Tutti uh, about uh, the community of religions uh, and uh, uh, community of uh, every faithful people. Uh, this dialogue with the Muslim world contains also beyond this uh, discussion on religions, one specific aspect, very false anti-Western and anti-Occidental sentiment. And this is also something that we hear repeatedly in different uh, interventions uh, from, uh, uh, from Pope Francis, the criticism of the Western world, uh, of the world uh, uh, that uh, focuses on consumptionism, uh, that uh, uh, abandons uh, values of fraternity, is unable uh, to share with uh, uh, those uh, who are needy in the world, uh, that is hostile to migrations, uh, uh, in different aspects, we see this uh, uh, very uh, strong anti-Western uh, uh, tone in these interventions. This tone comes also to uh, the forefront in another, in the second line of the foreign engagement of the Holy See, the dialogue with China. Another very strong line, uh, sometimes very controversial line also within the Holy See, about how far the Holy See may go in context with the communist China uh, in order to uh, uh, allow uh, uh, Christians uh, to live in China with certain perspectives uh, uh, from those uh, uh, who are are collaborating very closely with uh, Pope Francis uh, on this China dialogue that uh, China in perspective may become the largest Christian country in the world or Christian nation in the world. It is also inspired by uh, the uh, uh, very vivid Christian community in India, uh, the Jesuit province, uh, the largest ones in the Indian one uh, in the world. Uh, uh, no one would expect it perhaps 15 years ago that now Indians uh, are having such a large uh, uh, Jesuit community, the same with Vietnam. So Asia is very much in focus. But once again, in this relation, we see also this anti-Western tone in uh, many of these interventions and uh, in, uh, in this dialogue. And it touches the third line of uh, this uh, foreign dialogue or foreign engagement uh, uh, of, of the Holy See. This is the dialogue with the Orthodox Church. This is the most complex, perhaps, from uh, uh, all uh, these relations, because there are so many actors in uh, uh, this uh, dialogue. Apparently, the relations with the ecumenical patriarchate, uh, with uh, Patriarch Bartholomew's, are fantastic, very good. Uh, many gestures are exchanged. Uh, 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 some spectacular actions happened over past years, uh, something that never happened for 2,000 years at the Pope uh, of Rome has donated to Fana the fragments of the bones of St. Peter, what happened in uh, 2019 uh, and uh, uh, well-known uh, Pat uh, Metropolitan George uh, 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 Job Getcher was charged uh, completely by surprise uh, is bringing uh, uh, a small parcel with bones of St. Peter from the Vatican to uh, Fana, uh, because he was taken completely by surprise on the 29th of June 2019 by the Pope, who called him, please follow me to my private chapel. 
and he offered him uh, 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 the relics of St. Peter. So these gestures were something unexpected and uh, uh, never happened before in the uh, Christianity. But nevertheless, what struck me as observer of this relation is this tenacity in developing relations with the Russian Orthodox Church as being equal to the Pope. Ms. Tamara Gargalidze already referred to the declaration from Havana. And uh, uh, while reading this declaration, I'm always struck by certain very low level of ambitions in this uh, declaration. The first ever declaration between Pope of the Universal Catholic Church and uh, head of the Russian Orthodox Church, uh, first ever in history, we do not have any reference to the position of two partners, that one is the head of the Universal Catholic Church, the other one is the head of a national Russian church. So they are put on an equal footing in this declaration, which is something that uh, uh, strikes all of us, especially, I abstract from the personal question, from the infiltration by KGB, by all these uh, uh, other questions, but just, uh, to see this uh, 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 omission in this declaration uh, of the reference. And there is not enough emphasis of this engagement, what to do in order to shape the dialogue between all orthodoxy and uh, in the Latin church, very narrow focus on Syria. Once again, this declaration has been uh, uh, signed uh, uh, in the context of Russian engagement in Syria. That uh, was something that uh, most probably the Holy See have seen as a possibility of uh, uh, protecting Christians in the Middle East and especially in Syria, which was uh, for me uh, uh, also something surprisingly because uh, I would never expect that this was uh, the uh, real uh, uh, reason for Russia's engagement in Syria. There was uh, military and the geopolitical considerations not uh, something that uh, one could uh, understand as protection of Christians, because bombs and shellings do not uh, uh, distinguish between Christians, Muslims, uh, non-religious people, uh, or all others. Uh, and uh, this action has uh, had nothing to do with real intervention on behalf of uh, uh, Christians. But nevertheless, the interpretation given by this declaration from Havana gives a certain right to, the, to Russia and to the Russian Orthodox Church as protection of the Christians, as being the ones who protect the Christians. And once again, here we see the context, the protection against whom? Against also Western interventions against U.S. intervention in uh, uh, Syria, against uh, certain uh, Western aspects. And in this context, I refer, I close uh, in this frame by returning to Ukraine and uh, to the context of uh, this relation uh, uh, from the Ukrainian point of view. In 2016, I was still in Kiev. Uh, but just about to uh, uh, prepare for leaving for Rome, and Cardinal Parolin, uh, whom uh, uh, Tamara also mentioned here, visited Kiev in June uh, 2016, and uh, Nuncio organized a lunch for several ambassadors uh, with uh, uh, the Cardinal 
Secretary of State to discuss problems of Ukraine. And the nuncio introduced this discussion by saying that the problem of Ukraine in 2016 is the problem of humanitarian assistance to the society. Nothing more. Then we all gathered around the table, one after another, uh, refuted this uh, uh, perspective, saying this is not a question of a humanitarian assistance. Perhaps some uh, structures of the state are weak and are unable to uh, do everything that was needed. But the main problem is the Russian aggression that all the weaknesses of the state were revealed by this aggression, but not vice versa. And then we had to use sometimes very harsh and plain language in presenting the context of the conflict in Ukraine. In my talks in uh, uh, the Holy See after arriving in 2016, I used to uh, present the situation or the, the war, the uh, Russian intervention in Crimea and in Donbas as a Russian post-colonial war in Europe, urging Vatican to consider that, shall we, have we, have we had considered the colonialism of Western countries? of UK, France, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Netherlands and other countries, something that is no more compatible with the modern era, that something who belongs to the past and should never return back, then why should you give right to Russia to run the post-colonial wars in Europe? Some people were shocked a bit by this presentation because they never thought about uh, this war in terms of a post-colonial war. I guess now they considered it much clearer that uh, uh, this is an imperial aspect and Europe is not only under the threat of an Ottoman Empire, but also under the Russian Empire. And this empire instrumentalizes religion. This is not about defending values. Is about using pseudo Christian values to uh, interpret and to uh, support the state empire policy. Thank you. Very often, uh, people uh, who are close to the Holy See coin this pontificate Sguardo di Magellano. Uh, view from the Magellan, view from the outside to the center. And this is how people qualify very often the pontificate of uh, Francis. Uh, and he himself is saying that problems of the center are better seen from the outside. We may contest it. Uh, we uh, often contested this approach uh, in talking to uh, representatives of the uh, Holy See and the different dicasteries. But nevertheless, this is something that he has taken as his main line. We may notice that he didn't visit any of the traditional Catholic countries since his election to the Peter's throne. He was going punctually for some events to various countries, but not to visit the country. He went to visit countries who were rather on the margins of uh, what the Catholic or Christian world was. So this was something that influenced his very much. And I try to imagine what were the messages he was receiving during these meetings. Well, most, not only anti-Anglo-Saxon, anti-Western, generally anti-Western messages coming from his uh, 
Muslim interlocutors, from uh, his Russian interlocutors, from various people from Africa, from Latin America, mostly they were complaining about this so-called global West. And against this global West, Russia tries to promote the idea of global Russia. So that is very much against all our understanding of every values that sometimes people in the Holy See enter in this trap of this global Russia defending true values. Ruski yeah. Mir, this is something that is this trap, this global Russia that is so much promoted by Russia and people in the Holy See enter in this trap. Big mistake is now the relation between Fanar and uh, other uh, Orthodox churches and the Russian church. Uh, we've seen uh, this attempt of a Russian church to create an African eparchy because uh, of uh, uh, the uh, Jerusalem uh, Orthodox Church uh, Patriarchate from Jerusalem. Uh, has recognized the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, the autocephalic state. Alec Alexandrian. Alexandrian, Alexand sorry, Alexandrian. Uh, so they were some attempts uh, uh, from uh, Russian church then to dominate other, other regions. These attempts uh, with first big announcement faded up. Uh, uh, it uh, didn't bring so many fruits as they expected. Uh, the relation between Fana and uh, uh, Moscow uh, are, to my knowledge, completely broken. Uh, there are no uh, whatsoever no, relations. But the move is now, what is the impact of the Ecumenical Patriarchate over the clergy of the Moscow church in Ukraine to uh, move away from Moscow Patriarchate. We've seen the synod of the uh, uh, Russian Orthodox Church uh, in uh, Ukraine uh, 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 condemning the war and uh, uh, calling to and to pray for Kirill and uh, and there are many tectonical moves now. This war has uh, is a game changer. We still do not know the outcome of this game, uh, but uh, there are many various streams within the Orthodox Church. Uh, and uh, I guess Vatican is a bit lost uh, with uh, what's going on around and uh, is uh, rather afraid. This is uh, what uh, I will perhaps a bit contradict uh, uh, Tatiana's observations about the value of the Vatican's diplomacy. I was not... Uh, very amazed with the level of knowledge and with ability, especially to operationalize the knowledge. The knowledge may be there, but what to do with the knowledge? This is a completely different story. And within this autocratic structure, you may have people with a very, very deep knowledge of every uh, single country and complexity of problems within the country. But once the Pope says it, then people are obeyed to silence. They don't speak more. Huh? And then they, they have to follow the line or they try to uh, avoid at least uh, uh, contradict the Pope. Okay. With Pope Francis, yeah. No, not with Pope Benedict, uh, and uh, even not with uh, John Paul II. But I wanted to return to, to one uh, question in, in reaction to uh, 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 what uh, uh, Tamara has said also on the role of Juan Hilarion, of other 
agents of influence uh, of the Russian Orthodox Church. Uh, Russia as a state in the own policy is very predictable and classical. We may understand it, uh, what lines they are followed. They consider Vatican under John Paul II, one of the main actors of dismantlement and the end of the Soviet Union. They, fo they focus now on how to influence the Vatican in order to prevent another possible anti-Russian or anti-Ruski mir or anti what we, you may imagine that is in the heads of these people action or even to reverse through the Vatican what happened before. And this is, I guess, one of the keys to understand why the Russian Orthodox Church or the Russian state through the Russian Orthodox Church, because it would be probably probably the more correct uh, uh, statement, try focuses so much on Vatican. Uh, 